Good morning. Welcome to Wednesday's Word. I'm excited today. I didn't know what I was going to talk on, but I saw something on my walk, and it's a creature. So I'm going to call this a creature series. Two Wednesday's words ago, we talked about a beehive that was on the move, that was looking for a new home, that was ready to pollinate and protect and do all the things God created bees to do. Last week, we looked at a little frog, so tiny, almost imperceptible, but doing what God created it to do. On my walk this morning, I saw this creature. I took a little video, I didn't say a word, but watch, what do you see? Wasn't that exciting? If you take a look at it, this slug might have thought he was going as fast as he could go, but it was a snail's pace. Had it not been for the line in the blacktop, you might not have even noticed that he moved. He's going through this big road. I show you that at, at the end, and he could have easily been cushioned for somebody's tire, but he's a slug doing what slugs do, barely moving. And I couldn't think about uh, where a slug was mentioned, but I remember what, what Solomon writes in Proverbs. So I take you to Proverbs 6.6, 6, and I'll read a little bit farther. It says, Go to the ant, O sluggard, consider her ways, and be wise. Without having any chief officer or ruler... She prepares her bread in summer and gathers her food for harvest. How long will you lie there, O sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed man. Now, there are a few things here I want to point out to you. First of all, sluggard in Hebrew meant idle. It meant lazy. It might be calling somebody lazy bones. And I think about that, and in an economic way, there's something about that. God wants us to use the gifts he's had and, and not let time just waste away or our bodies waste away in inactivity unless we can't move. But I think there's a bigger lesson here. Because as we take a look at it, sometimes in the Christian life, we seem like we move at a snail's pace and time seems to pass and sooner or later we've missed an opportunity. We've missed an, we've missed an afternoon. Maybe we've missed worship. We've missed time in prayer. We've missed reading. And I want to encourage you because summertime's coming. This week is the last end of school or the last days of school. And we have a summertime challenge, a reading challenge to the congregation. Our, our education board, Katie Grower in particular, helped set it all up to encourage every one of us, kids specifically, but every one of us to read this summer, to open our Bibles, at least in my application, and, and read about the Lord, to spend some time with Him but not only to move by getting into the Word, but letting the Word get into us and move us and guide us and help us grow, help us um, grow in maturity, in fruitfulness, in action, in confidence. I think about that ant that teams up and that gets things done because there's a season to work and it's harvest time. There's a season that they'll need to draw on the labors of harvest time, to nurture them and help them when days are bleak, when winter comes, they can rely on the storehouses. 
And friends in Christ, that is true for you and it's true for me. The more we hide God's word in our hearts, the more we have to draw on when times get tough, when things get hard. It's walking with Jesus and it's God speaking into our lives and reminding us that we are his and he causes us to grow. He hears our prayers. He gives us strength and wisdom for the challenges we face every day. So let me encourage you, as Solomon did in, in the Proverbs, to get out and get moving, to get into God's word this summer or devotional books or however God leads, but taking good things and nothing's better than God's word and see where God takes you. Have joy in the journey. Let's pray. Dearest Jesus, we thank you that you didn't stay idly by when creation was lost, when mankind was destined to an eternity apart from you. No, you acted. You came. You took on flesh. You took on our sin. You took on all our shame and you fulfilled God's word for us. You died that we might live. You rose again to conquer death. Lord, even as I'm wearing a cleric today and have a funeral coming this afternoon, I'm reminded that this life is short. And Lord, that there is an everlasting life waiting for us in heaven. That's because you came. And so we get to enjoy your grace, the fruits of your labor, and we draw on them and we rely on them and we seek your face, knowing, O oh Lord, your grace is enough. So help us this summer and each and every day as we walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a wonderful week.